Um, welcome everybody, um, thanks for coming. Um, today is my great pleasure to share with you my research at Garvin on how the brain um, controls the fat burning. Um, Professor Herbert Herzog already gave you a fantastic talk about how the brain controls the anorexia nervosa, which is another extreme of the eating disorder. Today I'm going to share with you how we can um, you know, um, treat um, the brain or manipulate NPY to treat obesity. All right, um, I think I don't need to uh, convince you that the obesity is uh, now a global epidemic. It's really a problem. And in Australia, two thirds of the Australian population are either overweight or obese. And this number is rising. So obesity is a problem because it uh, links to a whole a lot of the health conditions and the diseases, including the heart disease, uh, diabetes, stroke, and fatty liver. It, it is also a risk factor um, for the arthritis and the cancer. Not all the cancer, but some of the cancers. Um, so it is also associated with an, um, um, uh, Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease, the condition and probably Anthony is going to talk about. Um, so uh, we use the uh, body mass index BMI and to uh, define whether our body weight is in the normal range and how much body fat we have. So it's very simple, uh, take into account of the body, um, uh, body weight as well as uh, your height. So the normal the, um, BMI is between the 18.5 as you can see, um, oh sorry. Um, as you can see here, 18.5 to 24.9. So if you BMI over uh, 25 and uh, lower than 29.8, you are overweight. If your BMI is 30, between the 30 and the 39.5, you are clinically diagnosed as being obese. So the higher the uh, body in, uh, mass index, the higher the risk of developed obesity-related uh, um, disease. Um, so obesity is all about uh, um, the fat, okay? But not all the fat is bad. So basically, um, there are two uh, kinds of uh, the fat, white fat, and brown fat I'm going to talk about in a minute. So the white fat is the one we are familiar with, and uh, most of the fat in our body are white fat. So the white fat is actually um, stored energy, excess energy as a lipid. So it is generally harmful and uh, associated with the, all the health condition we um, talked about in a previous slides. Um, in contrast, um, we also have the brown fat. Brown fat is very different uh, uh, to the white fat functionally. It actually burned fat and released the energy as a heat, which is lost to the environment. In doing so, energy expenditure is increased. So the brown fat is beneficial. So to combat um, obesity, we need to reduce the harmful uh, the white fat and increase the beneficial brown fat, or ideally both. Um, so um, Herbert has already gave a fantastic introduction about uh, the energy balance and how the brain controlled uh, this uh, process. So as, uh, um, as uh, he mentioned already, it's very simple. What you eat equals what you um, expand, you will have a stable body weight. And uh, Um, okay, if you, uh, what you eat, um, if you eat too much and then um, exercise not adequately and then you will have your uh, excess energy accumulated in your body and stored in the white fat and leading to the, uh, sorry, the weight gain. Um, on the other hand, if you exercise more and eat less and then uh, you will have this weight loss in long term. So it's very simple, it's all about the balance, how you tip the balance. 
So uh, unfortunately, current anti-obesity therapy um, as, um, uh, is not adequate. This one is still on. Okay, I actually changed the slides. It's still the old slides. Um, so uh, although um, uh, at the moment uh, we are focusing on the dieting and the exercise, and also there are a few the anti-obesity uh, medications and uh, um, uh, uh, targeting the inhibit, uh, you know, the appetite, uh, reduce the food intake, and uh, the current therapy is fail. A current therapy failed to stop the obesity from spreading. Apparently, a more effective and a safer anti-obesity treatments are needed. So Herbert has already given uh, the, um, uh, the introduction about this. Uh, we're interested in hypothalamus, particularly the one molecules we call NPY. So this is uh, um, the NP uh, human brain and uh, uh, um, this is the human brain, and in a normal situation, when we are hungry, the NPY level in the brain will go through to the roof, which drive you to eat, and then your food intake would increase. And as, as Herbert mentioned, when the NPY increase, your basal metabolic rate will reduce as well. Therefore, you will have a decreased energy expenditure. So by increase of the food intake, by decrease of energy expenditure, what the net outcome is, um, you will have more energy. So in a normal situation, when you're hungry, and then that is try to conserve the energy to bring the, the balance to the original place. However, when the, the NPY in the brain is constantly upregulated, constantly increase um, in the brain, which is often observed in the obese people, and what is going to happen? The weight gain is going to eventually happen. So we can actually manipulate this NPY level in the laboratory. This is a mouse brain, and we can actually increase a very, very tiny amount of the NPY into the brain region, very tiny brain region, and to trick the brain think we don't have enough energy. We need to eat the hungry brain. And then what we found, Herbert has already showed this one, and we found the mice, given the, uh, uh, the NPY in the brain, they eat more and they gain a lot of the weight. And at the same time, and they have increase of the white fat, which is the bad fat, as, I, as you remember. And, uh, um, and then uh, we look at uh, um, the, um, the brown fat, as, I, as you still remember, I mentioned that, uh, use a special uh, device called infrathermal camera, which looks for the heat production. And we measure the brown fat temperature and to see how many heat has been produced by the, this special organ, which is brown fat. So what we found is um, the higher um, the temperature and the, the, um, the red the color is. So what we found um, with the NPY increase in the brain. So the brown fat temperature, as you can see in the pink, is significantly reduced. What that means? That means increase of the NPY in the brain that have reduced the brown fat activity. Less energy is burned by the brown adipose tissue. Therefore, energy expenditure is decreased. Okay, so it's very kind of simple. So by using sophisticated molecular technology, we figure out that this is what happened. So when we increase the NPY level in the brain, and then we de the decreased sympathetic nerve, which is normally breaks down the lipids. So we will see increase of the fat, and we have decreased activity of the brown fat. Eventually, we see the, the, in the development of obesity. So, and in, on the other hand, we and others also show that if we decrease the NPY or block the NPY pathway in the brain, so what is going to happen is going to do the opposite. 
So we will see the um, less white fat and more active brown fat, which is the good one, is doing, trying very hard to burn the excess energy as a heat to lose weight. So in long term, you're going to have the weight loss. Um, so we are very excited about uh, what, uh, um, the, what we find. And then the next question we ask, uh, whether we can target the brain for the weight loss. Obviously, whatever the result I show you is from the animal, from the mice. Can we target the brain um, in human? And I think it's clinically, it's not clinically feasible. So as we know that, in addition to the brain, many other tissues and organs, including the white fat and the brown fat, is also expressed NPY and NPY receptors, like we are showing here. So NPY receptor and NPY like, uh, uh, works like uh, uh, a set of the lock uh, and key. Yes. So what do we think that we thought if we, whether we can actually block the NPY um, pathway in the fat tissue and to um, achieve the similar metabolic benefits as we observed to block the NPY in the brain. So we did exactly that. By, um, you know, we, by blocking the NPY, we can actually block the receptor action and, uh, uh, in the animal model. So the, the design is very, very simple. So we give the mice a cafeteria diet, it's a high fat diet, and then we also at the same time give the jelly containing the NPY receptor blocker. So we look at the body weight. As you can see, on high fat diet, the mice receiving the high, the NPY receptor blocker gained significantly less body weight compared to the control. And then they also have the less weight white fat, which is very good. And then again, we use this special device to measure the temperature of the brown fat, which is upper, you know, just upper back. As you can see that the brown fat temperature was significantly increased. And indicating that blocking NPY signaling activate brown fat activity, more energy is burned off um, to um, uh, the environment. So I have shown you that, uh, you know, the NPY, um, the blocked NPY system can activate the brown fat activity. And also, excitingly, lately, we found that uh, NPY receptor blocker can actually convert this energy storing the white fat into the energy, um, you know, energy burning beige fat. This phenomenon is called white fat browning. They can really turn this one into the good one, the bad one to the good one. So um, altogether, these two will increase over the energy um, expenditure. So um, I, I take, you, I'll take this balance back and then as you can see that, in addition to the exercise stimulating the activity of the brown fat and the white fat browning, and by blocking the NPY system can increase of energy and eventually um, the weight loss, leading to weight loss. We are very excited about uh, um, our result and this is actually the ongoing uh, project. I'm very much looking forward to share with you uh, my future findings and thank you for your interest and your generous support.